let's take a trip into the galaxy again, and to another system with exoplanets. Let's pay a visit to Kepler-10 and its planets. Come on, let's find out more. In the constellation of Draco, and lying just over 600 light years away, we find the G-type star named Kepler-10. When compared to our Sun, this star is slightly less massive, with a mass of about 90% of that of our Sun. It's also, however, slightly larger, with a radius 5% bigger than the Sun. It's also slightly cooler, and much older. Kepler-10 is nearly 12 billion years old, compared to just 4.6 billion years for our Sun. And we've potentially found three planets orbiting this star. I say potentially because we're not sure that all of them exist. These planets are called Kepler-10b, 10c and 10d. In fact, Kepler-10b is the first rocky planet ever to be found outside the solar system. So let's pay these planets a little visit and have a look. We're going to start furthest out and work our way in towards the star. We're also going to start with a planet that we know the least about. It is in fact as yet still unconfirmed. And this is Kepler-10d. And even though I said it was the furthest out, it still isn't very far out. This planet orbits the star at a distance of 0.366 astronomical units. That's about 54.9 million kilometres. That's over 3 million kilometres closer than the orbit of Mercury in our own solar system. It orbits the star in 102 days. If it exists, it has a mass of about 5.7 times that of the Earth, but at the moment we don't know its radius or even what type of planet it is. Let's move on and travel towards the star to find our next planet, Kepler-10c. This planet orbits the star at just a quarter of the distance that the Earth does. That's about 36 million kilometres. And it completes a rotation of the star in just over 45 days. This planet falls into the category of planets where we're not quite sure what type of planet it is. It has a mass about 7.3 times that of the Earth, and a diameter 2.35 times that of the Earth. This makes it a much bigger planet, and most likely to be a planet dominated by volatiles. Volatiles are chemicals which have low boiling points, and are important for planet formation. They include things like water and ammonia. This means that Kepler-10c could well be a water world, just like Kepler-22b. This type of planet has a large proportion of their mass as water of various different types. Deep below the surface of the water, the pressure is so high that strange types of ice form, produced not by cold temperatures, but instead by huge crushing pressure. Let's move on from here to our final planet in this system, Kepler-10b. This planet orbits the star at a mere 2.5 million kilometres, completing an orbit in just 20 hours. This planet has a mass of about 3.7 Earths, and a diameter nearly one and a half times that of Earth. This means that the gravity of Kepler-10b will be about 1.5 times the gravity here on Earth. If you were standing on the surface of Kepler-10b, then the gravity would feel uncomfortable, like carrying a really, really big backpack. However, the gravity on Kepler-10b wouldn't be the problem. Due to the proximity of this planet to the star, it will be hot here very hot. Because this planet orbits the star so closely, it will be tidally locked. This means that one side of the planet permanently faces the parent star, and the other hemisphere always faces away from the star. On the sun-facing side of the planet, the temperature would reach 1800 Kelvin. That's about 1500 degrees C, or roughly 2800 Fahrenheit. That is hot enough to melt the surface of the planet, meaning huge molten lava seas covering much of the surface of the sun-facing world. The other side of the planet faces permanently away from the star towards the blackness of outer space. On that side of the planet, the temperatures will plummet to minus 220 degrees Celsius or minus 370 Fahrenheit. Without an atmosphere to prevent these massive fluctuations, one side of the planet will be permanently scorched, while the other side will be frozen. There may be a thin band at the horizon, where the temperature might not be quite so extreme, 
but without an atmosphere this would be a desolate radiation blasted place and not a nice place to pay a visit. Kepler 10b is notable as it was the first terrestrial planet to be found outside our solar system, but it's highly unlikely that this planet has any form of life. The conditions are just too extreme. Right well I think that'll do for our visit to this interesting if harsh stellar system and for now and until next time, thank you for watching.